If you spend any time reading Japanese literature, there is one trend that you're eventually going to notice, and that is the fact that Japanese literature enjoys cats. Cats don't only feature in Japanese literature pretty often. They also feature in the titles, they are also protagonists, they are often the main theme, main feature, main character of various Japanese books. And so I want to talk about them. Many of my favourite Japanese novels in translation feature cats in the title, on the cover, and in the story. So let's talk about some great Japanese books that feature a lot of cats. I also want to mention that Japanese literature is my favourite literature. Most of my favourite novels come from Japan, and I also love cats. I grew up with dogs, specifically Labradors, over and over again, but in my adult life I have securely become a cat person. I love cats very, very dearly. They are my best friends. I love them so much. I have a cat in this room, but she's sleeping. Anyway, let's get to it. First up is the reason that I'm really here, and that is this book. We were sent this book by Picador recently, and I'm really excited to talk about it. This is The Cat Who Saved Books by Sosuke Natsukawa. It's translated from Japanese into English by Louise Hill Kawai, who is one of my favourite Japanese to English translators. She always does a great job, and she's done a really great job here. The Cat Who Saved Books is, at the time of recording, a brand new book in translation, and the cover is stunning. For a start, I got a bookmark that matched the cover. That was really nice. Picador sent us that. And this is a very slender little book that is being promoted as just a book, you know, a, a piece of adult literature found in bookshops, but it's really YA. In fact, you could even call it children's literature, but I'm gonna play it safe and call it YA fiction. I enjoyed this book, and I also had some problems with it that I'll get to in a second because they're very personal issues. First off, The Cat Who Saved Books isn't actually about a cat that saves books per se. It's about a boy who saves books with the help of the cat. The boy is Rintaro. Rintaro Natsuki is the grandson of the owner of Natsuki Books, who has just passed away. And rather than inherit the bookshop, Rintaro decides that he's just going to move in with his aunt in another town and shut down and sell the bookshop. Along the way, he has two friends who come into the bookshop periodically to talk to him and show him some affection and worry about the fact that he's not going to school right now because of his grandfather's funeral and sorting out shutting down the bookshop. And Rintaro is also a hikikimori. He is a shut-in. He doesn't have any friends. He's not very sociable. His world is this bookshop and books. His grandfather was really his only living relative, apart from this aunt he doesn't know, and he's really sad. But then, this cat comes along. This cat calls itself Tiger, it can talk, and it enters the bookshop and asks Rintaro to go on three journeys with it to three different labyrinths. Rintaro accepts, and the cat explains that they will need to go and save books from three different people, three different bulls of the labyrinth, if you like, who are going to destroy books in some way, each differently. And so they move to the back of the bookshop, which just keeps going and turns into a long corridor, there's a flash of white light, and suddenly they're in the first labyrinth. This book is made up of four chapters of four labyrinths, because there are three labyrinths, and then an extra fourth one at the end. Each time, Rintaro and Taiga are faced with a foe that Rintaro has to philosophically debate about the nature of reading, the nature of books, the importance of literature, the importance of the written word, the importance of books being available in the public space, libraries, bookshops, whatever. Why books are important. And you can tell this is just Sosuke Natsukawa waxing lyrical about why books are so important to him as an author in particular. It's a really twee and sweet story, and it's very much YA in the sense that the protagonist is a teenage boy with a lot to learn. It's pretty simply written, it's pretty short, it's got simple themes and ideas, and it would be pretty good at inspiring young readers, teenage readers, to enjoy more Japanese literature while also broadening their horizons. The book constantly references and spends time discussing specific works of classical literature. But this is one of my first gripes with the book, is the fact that apart from one instance, which is actually delivered in a kind of patronizing way, every single great author who's ever mentioned in this book 
is a European or American man. There is one Japanese author that gets mentioned, and it's a man. And then at one point, Jane Austen is mentioned as a great entry into literature for girls. And it really, really pissed me off. So that's not great. A lot of dead white men. I don't think there are any black writers mentioned either. So the author is just constantly reinforcing the idea that all the great works of literature ever were written by dead white men kind of pissed me off. There is also a bull that they attack, that they have to fight and debate, which... They're not actually bulls, by the way, this is my metaphor. Which is churning out new literature, and part of Rintaro's argument is that it's the great classics of literature that are really worth saving and really worth reading, and just rub me the wrong way. The book is also pretty formulaic. You've got the labyrinths, and each time Rintaro has to go in, and the labyrinth takes the form of a building, which he has to slowly move through, and then he ends up talking to the head honcho of it. One time it's a house with a rich man at the heart of it, another time it's a big office building with a rich man at the heart of it, and he has to face off against them, and it does get formulaic. But what saves it is the surprise of what he's going to see each time he passes into the labyrinth, and also the fact that eventually he brings a partner with him into the journey who creates some really fun dialogue as well as the cat. The cat is always there and the cat is feisty and charming and sweet. So the book is not perfect, but I also think that I'm not entirely its demographic. As I said, it really is a YA piece of literature and I like YA, but I never quite get as much from YA as I do from adult literary fiction. This is still a really sweet and charming book and it's great for people who love cats and love books. Just if you like reading diversely, if you like reading a lot of women and writers of colour, there are repeat references to dead white men that just made me tired. Next is The Travelling Cat Chronicles. This is by Hiro Arikawa and is translated by Philip Gabriel, who translates a lot of Murakami's books. I loved this book. I really, really did. I, I, I absolutely adored it. If you're on the fence about The Cat Who Saved Books and you haven't read this, definitely check this one out. The Travelling Cat Chronicles is a really sweet, charming, mature, and pretty sad book. I read it when I was living in Seoul like three years ago, and it has really stuck with me ever since. It tells the story of a man who lost his cat, and then finds another one that looks eerily similar to his cat. And the two of them spend some time together, as far as I remember, and eventually he has to get rid of the cat. He loves this cat to pieces, and he has to part with it and we don't really know why. He's come to a point in his life where he must move away from this cat. And it's all told from the cat's perspective. I think if I remember rightly, his first cat that died was called Nana, and this one's called Hachi, seven and eight. And I can't remember why. I think it's something to do with a marking on their face. Anyway, Hachi is our narrator all the way through the book. And the traveling cat chronicles take us across the landscape of Japan with a traveling cat. They're in a car together and they go from person to person in our protagonist's life as he is trying to find the right person that he knows to pass his cat onto. He says, look, I can't look after my cat anymore and I need someone. So he goes to see an old childhood friend, an old family member, an old colleague, whatever. He moves from person to person. And as he's talking to these people, we get to know more about his past, his history, his childhood, etc. So we're piecing together this man's life as well as his life spent with the cat and we're going on a journey across the Japanese landscape along the way and meeting interesting people. So there's a lot going on and it's all about journeys through time and space. And it's really, really lovely and charming. And as I said, it's all narrated by the cat who is just kind of observing all of this going on and judging the people that it meets. It's really, really lovely. The Traveling Cat Chronicles is a pure and sweet and wholesome book, but it is sad. Just bear that in mind, it is quite a sad book. Next up is the first Japanese cat book that I ever read. I read it quite a while ago now, four or five years ago, and it's called The Guest Cat by Takashi Hiraide, who is a Japanese novelist, and his wife, I think, is a pretty famous poet. The book's translated by Eric Selland, and I'm not sure what else I've read that he's translated off the top of my head, anyway. The Guest Cat is lovely. It's a really tiny book. I think it's under 100 pages. And it tells the story of a middle-aged Japanese couple living in the Tokyo suburbs who just exist. They just live a pretty ordinary, uninteresting life, and they need something to reinvigorate them a little bit. And this stray cat comes into their lives. It moves into their home, and it gives them a focus. It's kind of like if they'd had a child. They suddenly spend all of their time watching this cat, observing it, getting to know it, 
becoming friends with it, playing with it, feeding it, sleeping next to it, and the cat just adds so much love and colour to their life. Again, this is a sad book in places, but it's really about what the cat does to re-spark the lives of this couple, both as a couple, but also as individuals. The people by themselves start to come to life as this cat influences them, makes them laugh, makes them smile, gives them something to do, and it also reinvigorates their life as a couple as they have something to focus on and talk about and bond over. It's a charming, really sweet tale, and I love how short it is because it delivers its point, it's separated into like five or six chapters, I think, and each one hits in a slightly different way. Our protagonists are nice enough people, they're not that interesting, it's really about the cat allowing them to grow, and I really enjoyed it. This one's a little bit of a difficult recommendation because of how old and sometimes dry it is, but it is a classic and I need to mention it. I Am A Cat by Natsume Soski. Natsume Soski is an absolute legend of Japanese literature. He is a real linchpin of Japanese literature, especially 20th century Japanese literature. His book Kokoro is a very, very big deal, and a lot of people really enjoy I Am A Cat. It was the first book of his that I read. This one's translated by Aiko Ito, and I've definitely never read any other translations by them as far as I know. It's a book in three parts, and it's a little bit funny, it's a little bit sweet, it's a little bit sad, but it's also just a little bit long. I did enjoy it, but I found myself just kind of trying to get through it. It tells the story of a cat that enters the life of a middle-class teacher in Tokyo, I think. And the teacher has this cat, and it's from the cat's perspective, which is similar to the Traveling Cat Chronicles. The cat is observing the life of this human and judging him. And it's quite a thematically clever book because it's kind of about class and it's kind of about social relations and people putting on certain appearances and airs for their friends. The cat observes its owner as the owner changes depending on what guests he has round, what people he's talking to, times of day, etc. The cat is holier than thou. It is very arrogant. It's a cat. It believes itself smarter and better off than every human that it meets, and it sits there and just watches its human going, wow, look at the way he's behaving. What a silly human being. It's cocky and it's arrogant, but so is the owner. The owner is a really arrogant middle-class guy, and the cat enjoys watching him, and especially watching him flounder or get into arguments, etc. It's a really, really fun dynamic. The only problem is the book's a little bit thick and it outstays its welcome, in my opinion. But the core of what's there is absolutely brilliant. And Natsume Soski was also a pretty interesting guy. He moved to the UK and lived here for like, I think about three years in like the 1920s and he hated every second of it. <laughs> which I think is hilarious. He's a fun guy. If you haven't read Kokoro, Kokoro is a really lovely book. And I do recommend I Am A Cat. It's just a little bit on the long side. But apart from that, the content and the events that happen within it are very, very funny. Huh. I said before that I didn't know what else Eric Selland had translated. Turns out this. Guy likes cat books. This is If Cats Disappeared From The World. <clears throat> world. <laughs> world. It's by Genki Kawamura, and I wrote a review of this like three years ago, and that review for some reason was like our biggest article for like a full year. I mean, we were a really small blog at that time, but still, that review was our biggest article. It just kept getting read. I think it's still there if you want to go read it. But If Cats Disappeared From The World is another charming book. I've said that word a lot, but Japanese books featuring cats are often very charming and sweet and twee, but twee in a nice way. I like twee. If Cats Disappeared From The World tells the story of a man who, and I can't remember why, makes a deal with the devil. I think he's about to die? Is that right? And the devil agrees to give him an extra day of life for every thing that he disappears from the world. So he turns to the devil every morning and says, I want this thing to disappear, and he gets an extra day of life. I think that's right. And he thinks at first that he can just disappear little things like a stain or a twig. But the devil says to him, no, 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 no. You have to disappear one entire conceptual thing, like all houses, all curries, you know, an entire thing. And eventually the question comes, is he going to disappear all cats? 
What if cats disappeared from the world? But the cats aren't really the main focus as far as I remember for a little while. It's really about him disappearing certain things and having to say goodbye to them. He's a pretty selfish, horrible protagonist, but quite fun to watch at the same time. I think he disappears rental stores at one point and he has to say goodbye to his local rental store and rent a DVD for the last time. I swear I'm not making that up, I swear that happens. I haven't read this book in a while. Um, my big problem I remember having with it was the dialogue. It was really, really childish and silly. The way that the devil is written, and I don't know if it's Eric Sellen's translation or if he was just being very, very faithful, but the devil dresses like a 90s surfer dude and talks like one and it's enormously cringe. I think it's supposed to be funny in a camp way, but it's not. And I love camp humor, I love silliness, and it still didn't land even for me. So that says a lot. Apart from the dialogue, I do think the events of the book and the fact that our protagonist is so awful makes it a fun read. Another absolute legend of 20th century Japanese literature is Jinichiro Tanizaki, who wrote most famously probably the Makioka sisters. But he also wrote A Cat, A Man, and Two Women, and it's the story of a man who leaves his wife for his young lover, and the wife just wants her cat back. And it's this kind of to and fro between the man and his soon-to-be ex-wife and their cat caught in the middle of it. It's a comedy. It's not always that funny, partly because I guess it's like 60, 70 years old. I didn't find it that funny, but I also don't remember it that well. Oh my god. I should have reread some of these books before I started talking about them. But it's another really, really short book, and it's very grounded, and it kind of makes fun of Japanese culture from the perspective of a Japanese writer, because it kind of pokes at the rigidity of manners in Japanese culture, the, the right way of doing things, that kind of thing, how they have to adhere to the system system of manners while also just kind of wanting to say, give me my fucking cat. <laughs> <laughs> Jinichiro Tanizaki was a really, really great Japanese author, the Makioka sisters, he's an absolute legend. And A Cat, A Man and Two Women is probably one of his lesser known books, although I do quite often see it on the shelves when I go to bookshops. I really do recommend this one. If you had to choose between this and Natsume Soski's I Am A Cat, I would definitely choose this one. And finally, I do want to mention Haruki Murakami's Kafka on the Shore, which I think is the only book on this list that doesn't have cat in its title. But it's got a cat on the cover if you get the UK edition, and if you've read it already, you know that cats feature quite prominently with a side character who talks to cats and the cats talk back. Kafka on the Shore isn't necessarily about cats, and I'm not gonna say too much about it because I've done videos and articles on Murakami and he gets enough attention as it is. But if you want more Japanese books featuring cats, Kafka on the Shore is certainly one of them. Talking cats, weird cats, surreal cats, it's all part of Murakami's bingo sheet. And if you want to complete your collection of Japanese books about cats, featuring cats, whatever you want to call it, then you'll need to read this one. And also Kafka on the Shore is many people's favorite Murakami book. I think it's a little bit on the long side and a little bit on the strange side, even though I do like strange. I personally prefer The Wind Up Bird Chronicle and A Wild Sheep Chase. Those are my two favorites. But Kafka on the Shore is up there. Probably top five. Anyway, Kafka on the Shore is a really good book. I like Kafka and I like cats. So read it. There you are. That is my list of Japanese books featuring cats. I hope you enjoyed. It's a weird one, but it's a really popular thing and people love cats and people love Japanese lit. I love cats. I love Japanese lit. And I hope you enjoy these books. Subscribe for books.